Hey everybody, uh, welcome to my review of abdominal blood uh, drainage. Uh, we are going to take a quick look at the arteries also because I think sometimes it's easier to uh, identify some of those structures, uh, the venous structures, once you have the arteries as well. I apologize, I have a little bit of a cold so my voice probably uh, sounds a little bit wonky. It's also entirely possible that we will be interrupted by either my small dog, my cat, my husband, or uh, my four-year-old at some point. So we'll see how this goes. Um, the two images that we're seeing here are from a different atlas uh, than the one that you guys use. But it's okay, we can still use these. I think they're really good images. Uh, what we're seeing is the abdominal aorta, is our central uh, blood vessel in the abdomen. And then we can see some branches coming off of it. Uh, this one here is our celiac trunk, and I can tell right away because it has one, two, three branches coming off of it. This would be the superior mesenteric artery and the inferior mesenteric artery. Now the paired vessels that are coming off the aorta include the renal arteries. So over here's the uh, left renal, I'm sorry, the right renal artery and the left renal artery. And then we have the uh, right testicular artery and the left testicular artery. Now, if we didn't know the sex of this person, we could call them gonadal arteries. Uh, but we do know the sex, he's male, so we're gonna go ahead and call them testicular. Notice that the aorta comes down here towards the pelvis, and then it branches. And we call each of these branches a common iliac artery. So this would be the right common iliac artery and the uh, left common iliac artery. Uh, we call it common because it's about to branch, and indeed it does, into an external iliac artery, which goes externally onto the anterior portion of the thigh, and then the internal iliac artery, which continues down to the pelvis. And again, we have both a right version of those and a left version of those. Now let's look at the corresponding veins. Now remember that vein drainage should always go back towards the heart, so we're going to start uh, peripherally and then move our way again towards that heart. Uh, what we're seeing here are the ovarian veins. We have the right ovarian vein, which comes up and drains into the inferior vena cava. And then we have the left ovarian vein, which oddly enough, in um, an asymmetrical move here, is going to drain superiorly into that left renal vein. And then the left renal vein drains into the inferior vena cava. So we have this extra step over on the left hand uh, side of the body. Now we're showing you the female version of this vein. The testicular vein does the exact same thing on that left side. It goes, again, superiorly into that left renal vein before it joins the inferior vena cava. Uh, the other veins that we're seeing here, I see an external iliac vein and an internal iliac vein. And again, the same ones on the other side. Internal iliac vein and external iliac vein. Both the internal and external iliac vein flow into the common iliac vein, and the two common iliac veins merge together to create that inferior vena cava. Uh, the inferior vena cava receives the blood from both the renal veins as well as here, the hepatic veins. Those are the veins carrying filtered blood out of the liver. And then the inferior vena cava flows into the bottom of the right atrium. So no big surprises here in terms of venous drainage. Now things get a little bit strange when we start looking at abdominal structures or gut derivative structures as well as the spleen. And that's because anything that, any blood that's leaving a gut structure is potentially toxic, uh, that you absorb all sorts of nutrients, but also wastes and toxins and all sorts of stuff in the food that you're eating, and that goes into your uh, the blood that's leaving your gut structure. So all that blood is potentially toxic, and we're going to send it to the liver so that the liver can filter it and detoxify it before we return it directly into circulation. So when we're looking at blood, again, leaving gut-derived structures, that includes the stomach, that includes the liver, that includes the pancreas behind the stomach, uh, that would include any of your large intestine or any of your small intestine. And then we're going to throw the spleen in here as well, even though it's not a gut derivative. All of those uh, organs are going to be drained by veins that go into the liver before they go back into the inferior vena cava. So let's review our blood supply first, our arterial supply over on the left hand side of our screen. The really large artery that we're seeing is of course our abdominal aorta and I see it split here into the uh, right common iliac and the left common iliac artery. I can see the celiac trunk. I can see the superior 
mesenteric artery branches here, I can see it passing posterior to the stomach, and then heading down here, it would be supplying the small intestine and then parts of the large intestine. And I also see my inferior mesenteric artery here, heading towards the descending colon and the sigmoid colon. Uh, we're going to ignore the renal arteries, and we're going to ignore these guys, the gonadal arteries, for right now. Uh, let's get a little more in-depth with the branches off of the celiac trunk. So the celiac trunk has three branches. We have the left gastric artery here. We have the splenic artery, which is passing posterior to the stomach as it heads over to the spleen. And remember that coming off that splenic artery, we also have a left gastroepiploic artery, which is supplying the greater curvature of the stomach, as well as the greater momentum. Uh, heading over towards the liver on the right side of the body, we have the common hepatic artery. And remember that we're going to keep calling it common hepatic artery until the gastroduodenal comes down. And I can see that gastroduodenal artery passing inferiorly towards the duodenum, which is where my pointer is right now. The gastroduodenal artery gives off the right gastroepiploic artery. Uh, and again, after that gastroduodenal artery branches, we can then rename this artery here the proper hepatic artery or the hepatic proper artery. Coming off of the proper hepatic artery, we do see the right gastric artery, which is coming over to anastomose or um, provides some collateral blood flow with the left gastric artery on the lesser curvature of the stomach. All right, so the good news about the veins is that they have the same names. Uh, we're going to introduce a new vein, though, that's carrying all of the uh, potentially toxic blood into the liver, and that's this great big vein here. It's called the hepatic portal vein. And if you guys can remember that that hepatic portal vein is collecting all of that potentially toxic blood and dumping that blood into the liver for filtration, that's going to help us out a lot. All right, let's try and identify some of these veins. I do see the inferior vena cava here. And I see that inferior vena cava go right up behind the liver and keep on heading up towards the heart. Uh, this vein here, which is taking blood away from the small intestine, the cecum, the ascending colon, the transverse colon, which vein is that? That's my superior mesenteric vein, good. Uh, over here on the left side of my body, this vein, which is taking blood away from the sigmoid colon, uh, the descending colon, this is my inferior mesenteric vein. And then the vein that I see here, just behind the stomach, is the splenic vein. So these are the same veins that we've seen before. Let's look on the lesser curvature of the stomach. I have a left gastric vein, and over here, a right gastric vein. And on my greater curvature, I have a left gastroepiploic vein and a right gastroepiploic vein. So now we just have to see what each of these veins is draining into. So the inferior mesenteric vein comes superiorly and drains right here into the splenic vein. So if I was doing a trace, I would go inferior mesenteric vein to the splenic vein to the hepatic portal vein into my liver capillaries. Okay, if I'm on the greater curvature of the stomach, I could go left gastroepiploic vein into the splenic vein, into the hepatic portal vein, into my liver capillaries. If I'm on the right side of the greater curvature, I would take my right gastroepiploic vein into my superior mesenteric vein, into my hepatic portal vein, into my liver capillaries. If I'm on the lesser curvature of the stomach. Notice on the picture that both gastric veins, so whether that's left or right gastric veins, they both flow directly into the hepatic portal vein. And then the hepatic portal vein takes that blood into the liver capillaries. Let's try from over here from my ascending colon. For my ascending colon, I would take the superior mesenteric vein, which goes directly into the hepatic portal vein, and then into my liver capillaries. Cool. So basically you just have to treat this as a map and then 
see where is that blood flowing to next. Ultimately, all that blood winds up in the hepatic portal vein and then in those liver capillaries. And once that blood gets into the liver capillaries, the liver cells can go about detoxifying that blood, filtering that blood, and removing any sort of harmful chemicals or pollutants within the blood. Uh, once blood has been detoxified in the liver capillaries here, uh, fresh clean blood is then uh, transported out of the liver via these which are called hepatic veins. So there's a hepatic vein here and here and here and here. They're all very faint because they're inside of the liver. And all those hepatic veins go into the inferior vena cava. So there's a couple things that we want to be careful of because we're using hepatic, which means liver, in quite a few different ways. So we had the hepatic veins, right? Those are taking filtered blood out of the liver and into the inferior vena cava. We have the hepatic portal vein. This is carrying potentially toxic blood from gut structures into the liver capillaries for filtration. And then we have the hepatic proper artery, which is carrying fresh oxygen rich blood into the liver so that the liver can function. All right, um, I want to I want to practice just a couple blood traces while we have these images uh, up on up on the screen here. Uh, the first one that we're going to do is we're going to take blood to uh, let's see, let's go let's go to a tricky one. We're going to go to the duodenum. So we're going to take blood to the duodenum. We're going to start in the aorta, and I want to wind up my trace in the inferior vena cava. So I'm going to go from my abdominal aorta here into my celiac trunk. Then I'm gonna head this way through my common hepatic artery here to the gastroduodenal artery into the capillaries of my duodenum. Now, once I drop off the oxygen and I pick up the carbon dioxide as well as any uh, blood with nutrients or wastes or what have you, toxic, toxic substances, I now need to take that blood and get it back to the inferior vena cava. But remember, we want to filter it through the liver first. So I would leave the duodenum via the superior mesenteric vein here, which is going to then flow into the hepatic portal vein then into my liver capillaries where I detoxify and I filter. I leave via the hepatic veins into the inferior vena cava. All right, we're gonna do another tricky one. We're gonna take a drop of blood to the liver and out. So remember the liver is an organ, it's a very busy organ, it definitely needs oxygen rich blood. So how do I get blood to my liver? I'm gonna start again in my abdominal aorta and I'm gonna take this branch here, the celiac trunk, I'm going to take my common hepatic artery to my proper hepatic artery and right into those liver capillaries. At this point, the oxygen rich blood in the hepatic proper artery is mixing with all that potentially toxic blood from the hepatic portal vein. It all mixes together in the liver capillaries. The liver filters that blood, it takes the oxygen that it needs, and then blood leaves the liver via hepatic vein, which goes into the inferior vena cava, which can then travel back into the heart and rejoin circulation. We'll do a couple more practice traces when we get into lab next time, but I did want to introduce you guys to this hepatic portal system before uh, we try and identify structures on the body. Now remember, we only need to send blood to the liver if it's leaving a gut structure or the spleen, which means Blood that leaves a kidney can go directly into the inferior vena cava and go back to the heart. Blood that leaves an ovary can go back to the vena cava, the inferior vena cava, and back to the heart. Blood that leaves our lower limbs can go back into the inferior vena cava and back to the heart. I don't have to filter that blood because that blood doesn't go near any of the digestive organs that would be potentially uh, absorbing those toxic substances.